Hello, my name is Sachin Wani, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. On behalf of all my co-authors, I would like to thank GIE for this opportunity to present our paper, Comparison of Endoscopic Therapies and Surgical Resection in Patients with Early Esophageal Cancer, a Population-Based Study. Esophagectomy has been the standard treatment for patients with early esophageal cancer with which all other therapies are compared. Esophagectomy in patients in whom cancer has not yet penetrated the muscularis mucosa is associated with a five-year survival rate as high as 90%. Unfortunately, esophagectomy for early esophageal cancer is associated with an overall operative mortality rate of 2% and a morbidity rate as high as 10%. Endoscopic eradication therapies have gained gradual acceptance and has been endorsed by society guidelines, especially in the field of Barrett's related neoplasia. The basic premise of endoscopic eradication therapy is that cancer limited to the mucosa has a very low risk of lymph node metastases, approximately 0 to 2 percent. Although data suggest that endoscopic therapies are highly effective, studies comparing endoscopic eradication therapies with surgical resection are limited. Unfortunately, there are no randomized control trials that provide conclusive evidence regarding superiority of one treatment option over the other, and no such trial is expected in the foreseeable future. With this background, the aims of our study was to use the SEER database to compare two-year and five-year long-term overall survival rates and esophageal cancer-specific mortality in patients with early esophageal cancer treated with endoscopic eradication therapies and esophagectomy. To compare outcomes, i.e. esophageal cancer-free survival based on histology, and finally to evaluate treatment patterns and independent associations of treatment received with cancer-specific mortality. Moving on to methods, we use the SEER database that is supported by the National Cancer Institute that collects population-based cancer incidents, individual patient and tumor characteristics, initial treatment, and follow-up survival data from 18 U.S. cancer registries that covers approximately 28% of the U.S. population. The study population comprised of patients with the first primary diagnosis of early esophageal cancer. Early disease was defined by the extent of disease and categorized as stage T0, stage T1A, where the invasive tumor was confined to the mucosa, or stage T1B, where the tumor was confined to the submucosa. Patients with advanced stage disease, that is, tumor invading the muscularis propria or beyond, patients with lymph node metastases, those who did not receive endoscopic eradication therapy or surgical resection, patients coded as unknown for extension of tumor or metastases, and those with a diagnosis only provided by death certificates were excluded from this analysis. With regards to our statistical analysis, for individuals with a sufficient follow-up, we compared esophageal cancer-specific and overall two-year and five-year survival rates between endoscopic eradication therapy and surgical resection. Multivariable Cox proportional hazard regression models were used to compare and study independent associations of the type of treatment received with esophageal cancer-specific survival or overall survival. Hazard ratios with 95% confidence intervals were calculated. Moving on to our results, a total of 2016 patients with early esophageal cancer 
undergoing endoscopic eradication therapies and esophagectomy between 1998 and 2009, meeting inclusion criteria were included in the final analysis. 430 patients, which was 21.3% of patients underwent endoscopic therapies with the remainder undergoing esophageal resection. Patients with lymph node metastases were excluded from this analysis. The vast majority of patients included were white men. The overall histologic distribution was esophageal adenocarcinoma in 78% of cases, squamous cell cancer in 13.3%, with the remainder being coded as others. The distribution based on the stage of disease was as follows. Stage T0 was noted in 357 patients, which was approximately 18% of our study population. Stage T1A in 935 patients, which was 46%, and stage T1B in 724 patients, which was approximately 36% of the study population. In patients undergoing endoscopic therapies, endoscopic mucosal resection was the predominant treatment modality, which is performed in approximately 68% of cases. This was followed by mucosal resection and ablation, which was seen in about 10% of patients. With regards to outcomes in patients with early esophageal cancer, there were inherent differences between the two groups with patients undergoing endoscopic therapies being older, more likely to demonstrate T0 and T1A disease, and harbor smaller tumors with well-differentiated histology compared to esophagectomy patients. There was no difference between the two groups with regards to the two- and five-year esophageal cancer-specific mortality. Patients undergoing endoscopic eradication therapies had a higher five-year overall mortality rate, but this was mainly attributed to differences in the non-esophageal cancer-related mortality rates, which was predominantly related to cardiovascular diseases. Similarly, we found no differences in the two-year and five-year esophageal cancer-specific mortality between endoscopic therapies and esophagectomy when comparison was limited to patients with stage T0 and T1A disease. We noted similar results when we compared esophagectomy to patients undergoing endoscopic therapies in patients with early esophageal adenocarcinoma. Results of the Cox proportional hazard models showed that the hazard ratio for esophageal cancer-free survival and overall survival in the endoscopy group was not different from those patients belonging to the surgical resection group. Significant variables associated with increased mortality included age at diagnosis, exposure to radiation therapy, increasing stage of disease, the year of diagnosis, and a tumor histology of esophageal squamous cell cancer. Time trend analysis confirmed a significant increase in proportion of patients undergoing endoscopic therapies for management of early esophageal cancer and a significant decrease in proportion of patients undergoing esophagectomy for management of early esophageal cancer. We acknowledge the following limitations of this study. The SEER database does not provide any information on comorbidities which may in introduce the potential for selection bias. However, given the older age and higher non-esophageal cancer-related deaths in the endoscopy group, it is logical to conclude that patients with more significant comorbidities are more likely to receive endoscopic therapies. Lack of confirmation of the final diagnosis by expert GI pathologists is a limitation of this study. And finally, the SEER database 
only reports on the first therapy that the patient received and hence does not report on the number of patients in whom endoscopic therapies fail and patients who subsequently underwent surgical resection or the number of patients with recurrent cancers after endoscopic therapies. The main strength of this paper is that we used a large population-based database that provides cumulative experiences from multiple institutions across the country and thus provides real-life data that may be more generalizable than results reported from single tertiary care institutions. In conclusion, our results from this population-based study demonstrate comparable esophageal cancer-related mortality in patients with early esophageal cancer undergoing endoscopic eradication therapy and surgical resection. In the absence of randomized control trials, these results provide confidence that endoscopic therapies is a reasonable alternative to esophagectomy for the management of patients with early esophageal cancer. I thank you for your attention.